What you are about to hear is real. They thought I was crazy, but I wasn't. Proved that I had the highest. What are you looking at? You? You think I'm crazy, too? No, I don't. This is the booking desk. I've been drinking. Police headquarters. But I still don't know what I'm doing. Now, can I talk to you? What's the matter with her? I don't get it, Sarge. Not to be a mental case. You can't storm her in here and just put her in jail. Looks like she's been drinking a little bit. Well, let's talk to her and then we get her to go to a hotel. You wouldn't stand it. This is Don Reed, police recorder. You're with Detective Unit 5-6, and you're going to follow us tonight wherever we go. And while you're with us, just remember one thing. That woman over there, the people you meet, they're not actors. You see, this is it. This is real. This is Night Watch. Night Watch. The actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors. There is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch. Presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. And now we switch you back to headquarters and to the official police recorder, Don Reed. At the booking desk, woman insists on being arrested, having some sort of a uh, husband trouble. Desk officer Al George trying to straighten things out. Trouble down there, man. I wouldn't go. I won't go back to my husband. No, I'll die first. Did you, uh, did you have a fight with him? <laughs> yes. He keeps telling me how crazy I am. I won't go back there. No, I'll die. I'll kill myself. I won't go back to him. Does he harm you in any way? No, he's been very good to me, but I just don't like the way he talks to me. Even if they try to force me with a gun, I wouldn't go. I'd let him shoot me first. Lieutenant Machado, uniform skipper. Going to get in on things. Can I talk to just one minute? Sure. Now, you have money yes. to take a cab. My advice to you is we'll call a cab, and you stay at a hotel or a motel tonight, and then tomorrow you'll... Different, no, I've been staying here where I'm safe because, believe me, he has a way of finding out things. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Well, he wouldn't, he wouldn't find out tonight, I'm sure of that. You just don't know him, then. Well, either, either call a cab and have to stay at a hotel or a hotel or call a call from a friend or something else. Put me in jail or else. Okay, then you'll be have to call the ambulance before long. Why? Because I'll run out of front of the car. Well, that's not the time you're... No, it isn't talking about. You're growing up. Yes, I'm How growing up. Are? I'm 30, almost 32. I'll be 32 next Saturday. Well, I mean, you know better than that. Yes, I know better than that. But you just don't know the man I'm married to. Well, you sit down for a while and we'll think it over. Because I want to be protected. Right? Woman standing still. Very powerful build. Perhaps 200 pounds. But I don't want to go. I want to stay right here. I have no friends or nothing to go to. That's, that's what really hurts me. Just please tell him to put me in jail. I don't want to go. No place. I just want to stay here. If you if you people knew how he was, you'd feel the same way I do. Now, you want to take her into the detective room and let Ross talk to her? I don't know what we're going to be able to do. I don't think we can turn her loose. I'm going to record check and I'll see if I can get a hold of her husband. Right, I'll take her on in first. Let's uh, move across the hall to the detective bureau. You know, we'll have to find some way to help her. A woman sitting in a chair, biting nails. Well, I don't know. Detective Ross putting out a cigarette. How long have you been married to this man? Um, let me see. We got married a year ago, April. How can we help you? What can we do to help you? Just put me in jail and get me away from him. Well, we don't want to put you in jail. Well, I don't want to go out any place else. Because if I do, he'll be sure and find me. He'll stay up all night looking for me. Well, has he hurt you before? Or? He didn't be told me. Why did he do that? I don't know. He was drinking. Has he been drinking tonight? He, he drinks every night. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't very well put you in jail, and I don't think that would solve anything anyway. Well, I don't want to go out 
In the meantime. In other words, you just left the house and, and uh, you don't intend to go back. Is that no. Right? Do you intend to go back to get your clothes? No. Do you intend to take any legal action like getting a divorce? No. And I wouldn't get him a divorce if he started. I'd let him suffer. I really would. Do you have any children? Yes, one little girl. Where is she now? I don't know. I couldn't tell you that. You don't know where your own daughter is? Who has her? My sister ran away and we couldn't find her. With your daughter? Mm hmm She went to the doctor, so I wouldn't find the adoption papers, so she ran away with it. And was, did that happen while you were in the... Uh, uh, the hospital, yes. Yeah. They say they're all insane to go out there. The truth, when I was when I only weighed 118 pounds, you wouldn't believe it, but I um I broke a man's arm that was weighed two, over 200 uh, 200 pounds. That does it. <laughs> How did you break it? Hmm, well, he just tried to get smart with me, so I said him I could get smart too. You broke his arm. I sure did. I just threw him over. When I threw him over, when I like those police do, it, throw him over. Well, when they threw him, when I threw him over, I twisted his arm and broke it. I'm glad you're sitting way over there, and I'm here. You might get mad at me about something. No, I'd rather got mad. You know it. <clears throat> I don't want you mad at me. It wouldn't take me two seconds to get over this desk. What? They say I have an insane temper, and I believe it. When I get mad, I go crazy. And I just soon tell a person's look at him. Yeah. Sure, can I see a man? Yeah. Excuse me, please. We're going to have to take this woman down to General Hospital for observation. Yeah, I wouldn't want to take the responsibility for any other way. Bob, uh, that woman sitting in my office there, you want to take her and place her in the detention room? Yeah. Lieutenant Machado's making out papers. She's going to go to General Hospital. Right. Ma'am, you want to discuss the Too bad there isn't some other way. Yeah, we had a record check on her. She's been in two institutions. She doesn't even have a baby. Actually, doesn't even have a husband. You are listening to Night Watch and following the activities of Detective Unit 5-6 on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real, and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. And now we switch you back to police headquarters and to the official police recorder, Don Reed. talking to a fellow out there that came into the station, tells us that there are two guys waiting for him down in the drive and wants to sell him some Benzedrine pills and drop him the marijuana for good measure. Uh, here's the address and before we tell them. Well, it sounds like a good deal. We've been looking for a couple of guys down there. Where's the phone? That's right in the next office. Okay, bring one in, please. Uh, do you want to come in here? Uh, Good haircut. A little nervous. Now tell me quickly and very briefly just how you came in contact with them. Uh, I walked in. They were sitting there talking to some guys I knew. Inside the building? Mm-hmm. All right. And uh, I, was, I started a conversation with the guys I knew, and uh, they started kicking around this hip talk, you know, walking the Great Wall of China and bending up the spoons and making signs and all this and that kind of stuff. So I figured I'd just go along with them. And uh, I talked it up with them, you know, give them some indication that I knew what they were doing. And uh, they left, and later on I went outside, about a half an hour later I went outside, and uh, I was standing out there talking, and they drove up in a car in this Ford, and uh, they uh, said, we got a proposition, and I said, talk, and he said, get in, and I got in the back seat, and he made the proposition there. And what'd you tell him? I told him I had some business to take care of up in Westchester, and I'd be back in 40 minutes. Okay, about that time now. Right. All right, now, are you willing to go through and try to make a purchase for us? I sure am. All right, that's exactly what's going to happen. <clears throat> if you're willing to do it, you understand, we'll give you all the protection that you need. There'll be mm -hmm. no danger. The only one that they're afraid of is are the police. 
they're not going to be afraid of you. We'll bust you right along with them. Mm -hmm. In other words, you'll go the same route as they do, only yeah. you'll be on a, on a fictitious booking thing. Mm -hmm. so that, that'll keep you out of it. But you may have to testify later if it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Just one thing to remember, I want to emphasize this very strongly, that they won't do anything to you at all unless they think that you have tipped the police. That's the only danger you've got. But we'll be there. Now, we'd rather let the sale go completely to protect you. In other words, we're not we're not going to stand back and let anything happen just in order to make an arrest. So you'll have the protection. But if they think the police are watching them, or if they think that you are tipped the police, then that's where the trouble will be. They don't know anything about it, then you're okay. You don't have to worry about it. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, they offered to sell you what? Uh, Graff or Benny's. Uh, they quote your price. Five for fifty. Ten milligram. Ten milligram? Mm-hmm. And how about the weed? How about the marijuana? They didn't call any price. They didn't call any price. Probably 50 cents a piece or 75 cents a piece. Uh, did you give them any indication of being interested in? Yeah. All right. Are you got your car out here? Mm hmm You by yourself? Mm-hmm. All right. I got three dollars here. Jim, I want you to uh, check the serial numbers. I know I've written them down here. Detective Ross checking the serial numbers against the bills. In case we make an arrest. Both officers can testify these are the same ones found in the suspect's possession. Okay. Right. Right, this will be the money you'll buy with. Mm -hmm. We're interested in, in uh, marijuana mostly. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. Try to buy, try to buy uh, four joints. Ask for four joints. That will, won't cost you more. Shouldn't cost you more than 75 cents a joint at the most. If they go over 75 cents, tell them it's too much. In other words, what if they want to sell it raw? If they want to sell it raw, uh, Tell them to give you a couple of bucks worth, let you see what it is, and you'll make a deal with them for a tin later. Find out what the tin's going to run. Mm -hmm. And uh, they get uh, nosy or curious to say, okay, you guys offered, you don't want a deal, I'll go someplace else and let it drop. Okay. And we'll cool it off and we'll get it later. And here's the $3 here now. Remember what I told you. Now we want to work out some kind of a signal arrangement. Let's use a signal you're smoking. Let's use a signal of flipping a cigarette away like that if you make a buy, after you make a buy. Okay. okay. In other words, you can light up during the conversation. Mm -hmm. And as you turn to leave, flick it away. If you don't flick it away and you carry it with you, we know there's no buy. And then you're just a surprise anybody else when we move in. You got that? Mm hmm Okay? All right. All right, let's go. I'm to get his, his license Yeah, we'll get that when we go out. Here's yeah. the, uh, grab the walkie-talkie. Well, we've learned some good information. A walkie-talkie and a lot of patience. If we have good luck, our man will make a buy. And we'll make an arrest. Five six to unit nine. Can you read us? The car five six, Roger, but you're breaking up. Uh, five six and nine. Our man has just pulled into the drive-in on the north side. Hey, Roger, we see him. Unit nine. Our other detective crew are uh, secured around the other side of this drive-in, out of our view. They have just a small portable transmitter with them. Atmospheric conditions or steel buildings in between makes it. Makes it sort of rough to transmit and receive. Perkins has the field glasses strained on our man. Oh, so he's talking to guys just inside the door. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see three of them, but they're too far away to make much out of it. I think should be coming out. If he tosses that cigarette away, we'll know that he's made a deal. Or um, scored, as we say in the trade. Then we'll move in. Everything goes right. Our man will have the mark money. I've lost the perk. Can you see them? Yeah. Wait a minute. It looks like they're going up the back way. Oh, brother, we got a problem now. We can't see them from here, and we may, may be spotted if we move. Five, six to unit nine. The suspects are going out the back door. Can you see them? 
going to start breaking up. Uh, five, six to control one. Can you relay Unit 9's message to us? One to five, six, stand by. One to Unit 9, repeat your message for five, six. probably get soft-pedaled. You know what you're going to be booked on? What? Conspiracy to violate the narcotic laws. You're cold, man. You're dead. The money is marked. That was a setup tonight. Not the mark. Okay. Is it being jail? No, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm back to book them on conspiracy to violate state narcotic law. Water will give you the section. solid case against you. You're dead. Let's not waste our time with a bunch of lies. Do we understand each other? Suspect staring. Breaking into a half smile. Okay. 
and you guys accepted this money for the purpose of furnishing narcotics. I'll start right from the beginning. Who approached who on this deal? How did this thing materialize tonight? Um, it was through, through joking around. I was, uh, somebody had said something, and uh, I made a joke about the Great Wall of China and ringing a gong on it. And he just swung right around his feet, and he said, oh, you there with a 35-pound monkey on your back. And I just laughed, and I said, you know, I said, oh, you walked on the Great Wall of China, too. What were the, what were the words used when the money was handed over? What was the transaction? I had asked him, uh, what do you want? Do you want benzene or dextrin? Yeah, what did he say? And he sort of thought he was old benzene. Yeah. Right. And how much were you going to get up? Just what uh, I told him, 50 for $5. Right. And then uh, I was going to see if he was going to give it back. Do you uh, use uh, benzene? I have. Well, what do you mean? I don't quite follow. Uh, I came in contact with somebody once at a time when uh, I was associating with people that had used marijuana. And it, this person's way of living was a better standard than the people I was associating with. I moved in with this person, and they showed up with a jar of Benkadrin. In, in effect, an inexhaustible supply. Like, you go ahead and make figures for so, mm-hmm. if that's what you want to be. They were also using it to educate, in a way. They did a real lousy job, in effect, that they were making a profit off of, and they were making every pill pay for them, too. Well, how does it feel? Oh, yeah. Benzedrine? I work on them. What do you mean by that? Work. You know? Well, I'm a cook. Oh, you uh, I'm a, I, I am a cook. It keeps yeah. you, uh, I can work then. I work faster, accomplish what I want to do. How many How many times did you want? Mm. Probably $2,000, $3,000. Two or $3,000? Mm, probably. I don't know. What is it, what's it been in uh, Benny's? Yeah, definitely. For myself. How's he, how's he operating? How does he cover it? All I know is you go in and give him $5, and he marks it in a book. I know that. Mm-hmm. At the time, he was there. He supplies right there. He yeah. doesn't give you a prescription or anything like no, that? No, no. I had asked him for a prescription. He didn't give it to me. How did you meet him? I've been introduced to him. You think you can set me up there? Sure, I can. Think you can take me and introduce me, and I'll make a buy. And I come back two or three times later, and I get busted with him. You don't know anything about it. He doesn't know what you know anything about it. I just get caught with it, buddy. Can be done. Although, the doctor himself, I think only once has ever actually given me the pill. Who gives them to you? Either his, during the daytime, his secretary. During the nighttime, the night doctor. Was it a clinic or something? Or? It's an emergency hospital. It's an emergency hospital. When you want it, how do you go in to get it? What do you, you just walk in there to reduce himself. Ron? Yeah? Okay. You can get as many as you want. As many as you got money. In lots of 50. 50 just falls out. When you made your first deal, did you make it with a doctor or with somebody else? With the doctor. You made it with this doctor here? Yeah. And then after that, well, you just got it from whoever happened to be there? No prescription. No prescription. How much were you taking when you were taking the most? Myself? Yeah. I had taken 15 in one day. How did you get started on My employer gave it to me. The first benzene pill I ever had in my life he gave it to me. So now you're behind me, Paul. I've been behind the eight ball for a long time. ourselves a big fish.
What you have just heard is real. All the investigations are recorded as they actually occur. And now, back to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. In tonight's first case, the woman who insisted on being arrested was taken to the county general hospital for observation. Rest and consultation brought about her mental recovery, and she was released several weeks later. The final investigation in which two youths were arrested with marked money resulted in their being booked for conspiracy to violate the state narcotic act. The maximum penalty upon conviction is confinement in the state prison for not more than 10 years. I recall someone saying, these fellows are just small-time operators. In the overall, this was true, but with the information supplied by the suspects, our department, in conjunction with several law enforcement agencies, was able to move in and crack a large ring of operators that were selling various types of narcotics. This entire operation was possible only because a young citizen brought this information to the attention of our officers. To show how you, the citizen, can assist your police department is one of the reasons why each week we bring you Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following the -the on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch, brought to you through the cooperation of the police department of Culver City, is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hedlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins and described in the field by the official police recorder, Don Reed.